Hey, this is Jamie from the Jamie Porter Band, and you're watching Chana 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 Podcast. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest today, all the way from North Wales. Uh, we have Jamie Porter from the Jamie Porter Band. Hi, Jamie. Hey, Chana. How are you? I'm good. Uh, how about you? Oh, yeah. not Well, not bad considering, you know, what's going on in the world, you know. We plod on, still being creative. Right. So how's the situation? I know that there's, uh, there's some COVID, uh, there's a new strain or something in the UK, right? Yeah, well, I was watching the news this morning and apparently it's, it's all over. It's, it's in Germany, Holland, Canada, uh, you know, so... It, it, yeah, it, it may be, maybe it's, you know, it's mutating all over or, you know, you can't really tell, can you, with this sort of thing. Right. But we, we, yeah. are, we are currently in a three-week full lockdown in Wales with, um, you know, only, only the supermarkets open for food. Right. Uh, and they're not, yeah. they're not allowed to sell anything else. You know what they call non-essential items. I suppose like computer games and yeah. So it's it's a it's quite quite a, you know a restriction on 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 normal life. So right. Yeah, actually, yeah. we are in the. I mean, the, I mean, Philippines. So we actually been in lockdown for like nine months now. So <laughs> exactly the same, the same sort of thing. Now we. Yeah, now it's a bit uh, relaxed, but uh, the rules are it's relaxed because people really, you know, tired of all the all the restrictions. So, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, in in the UK, it's been very inconsistent, I think, and mixed messages. It's uh, yeah, people don't really get the reasons why uh things are done like um they closed all the, the pubs and restricted them it's for for good reason in some respects but in other respects not because some have you know have they've had to spend a lot of money on changes right you know, to to adhere to legislation and then so but uh, unfortunately yeah it's 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 hammering the economy at the moment Right. And there's not much, not, not many music, musicians working. Right. So, Jamie, when did you last, uh, last perform the uh, live? Um, like March, <laughs> March of this year. Um, right. We were, we were supposed to be, we were supposed to be, we had a, uh, a show that we were supposed to be supporting um, Faster Pussycat. Right. Um, when they, they were supposed to be coming over to, from America to, to, uh, to, for their European tour. And uh, we, I was looking for looking forward to to that, and then um, yeah, then lockdown happened the week before, and of course everybody was saying, "Oh, I'm not tra you know, we didn't travel and this, uh, and then yeah, so we played, we did play a sort of a, a show in the same venue, but it was with more local bands, a rock night, if if you know what I mean, so uh, which was it was a good venue, so it's always good fun, but, um, but yeah, so since then nothing we've done. Uh, a few recorded streams, if you like, for various right. events, um, but acoustic stuff, not not rock stuff. The full the full uh, outfit, and um, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, we've done. I've only done one live stream so far, but we're thinking about doing another one in the not too distant future. So, right. Um, can you tell me a little bit about where you are? Like you're in North North Wales, right? So. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the place? Yeah, I mean it's it's not a very highly populated area, um, and it's it's um, uh, very much a, a touristy sort of in, environment, if you like. You know, people come out to on holiday there. Um, we live in a little village next. Uh, there's a quite a famous town called Conway, or Conway, uh, just a couple of miles. On the road, which has a evil castle there, which is quite a big tourist attraction. Um, yeah, it's very picturesque, very picturesque. But you have to travel a lot if you're a musician to to play your to play your stuff. Um, yeah, um, and we live we live by the coast. It's it's 
it's a really nice, beautiful place, part of the world. Right. <clears throat> so, Jamie, uh, uh, before we talk about the band, can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and then how did you like get into music? <laughs> I can't remember that far back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, musical family, really. Um, not into rock music at all. It was more sort of uh, um, classical music and uh, church music, I guess, mm. you know, um, gospel and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I had piano lessons as a kid, as a lot of people do. I was always singing, you know, various things. I'd quite, um, so always been musical, I guess. Uh, and then I think, uh, I think I saw an ad, an advert and some program. I started getting an interest in rock music, much to my parents' disgust, uh, at, at the age of around 10, 12 or something like that, you know. And um, I think I sort of picked up on, it was status quo actually, initially, that was, uh, <laughs> that got me in, into, uh, you know, the rock and roll, uh, into the rock. Although my uncle, so my uncle has, was a big country and Johnny Cash fan. He, so every time I go around to his his house, it would be Johnny Cash on the on the, on the record player, you know. So that was that was really cool. Um, so I had a connection with him, and then um, yeah, discovered rock music, and then it was sort of Gary Moore that I discovered next, and AC/DC, uh, Iron Maiden. They were the sort of ones I kind of grew up grew up with at the time right. um and then we what would be I, I had a walkman you remember the walkman right. tape yeah yeah well, that's, that's what i had in the back in the old days um and yeah i think it was you know some of those uh for those about to rock and peace of mind i remember having those on my on my walkman as as a particular uh right. favorites and then it, it sort of from there I'd, I'd explore you, you know you'd you'd read about people like Gary Moore or what their influences were you know and mm. uh, you know how it sort of snowballs doesn't it you sort of oh that's I'll check that out I'll check that out and so I kind of got into in, interested in uh, traditional blues and uh, you know and then the old blues guys like uh, Buddy Guy and BB King and you know just um, and and, he, and even some sort of jazzy types as well like charlie christian and al demiola I, I used to just go and explore guitar players um because people like i was i was also influenced a lot by i say influenced i loved the stuff that they were doing by um vinnie moore and um tony mcalpine right you know those instrumental guitarists fantastic musicians so yeah so i'd i'd really I'd, I'd love that sort of stuff. Couldn't play like any of them, but, you know, I just loved the, you know, it, the time and the, the, it was just fun and awesome kind of, you know, not heard this sort of stuff before. And then, I, you know, it would be getting into Hendrix and, you know, appreciating, uh, and, and then, yeah, I love, but I, I kind of, I kind of like fun, fun rock. Um, I think, I think my favourite sort of, area would would have been i don't know guns and roses poison um cinderella and that sort of blues rock right. kind of vibe britney fox they are the big hair bands you know uh i i used to like all that that's sort of, i still like all that sort of stuff um yeah but taking influences from from loads uh and it's really I spent a lot of time trying to be, you know, like, oh, you know, I'd hear uh, Dan Baird and the Georgia Satellites. I don't know if you've heard of them. Dan Baird, one of my favourite musicians, songwriters of all time. I just loved his his stuff. And then, you know, you'd hear all this stuff. And then I'd hear Leonard Skinner and think, oh, yeah, I want to be in a band that sounds like that. And then Rolling Stones, oh, yeah, you know, and it, it'd, be, it'd be like, oh, you know. Hellfire, and then Steve Vai came along. I got introduced to Steve Vai, and I, right? Yeah, and then I nearly gave up. Uh, <laughs> no, 
but yeah, Paul Gilbert as well, Mr. Big, that sort of, obviously he was in Racer X, wasn't he, in the, the mm. early when he was a teenager. Right. Uh, but Van Halen as well, David Lee Roth, loved that, that stuff. You know, the fun uh, extrovert showmanship, but it's totally the opposite to me, I think, really. So that's that's kind of why I was drawn to it. Right. You mentioned Johnny Cash. Your uncle was a fan. Actually, I, I'm also a big fan of Johnny Cash. I actually... Hey! <laughs> cool. Uh, I, I love it. I love his stuff as well. You know, it's it was... Yeah, it's Orange Blossom special, Walk the Line, you know, that all that sort of, uh, um, I can't, Wreck of the Old 97, yeah. Boy Named Sue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there were so many of them. We just used to go through and sing, he'd be singing the lyrics along to me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good fun. I did I did spend a lot of time working those songs out as well, you know. When, right. When, <laughs> I really love the, so, the albums he did in the prisons, the Folsom prison and San Quentin. The album, oh, yes. albums were amazing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is, you know, you get, you know, there's quite a few live albums that I have loved list, listening to over over the years. But yeah, the Folsom live in Folsom prison uh, and San Quentin, yeah, definitely up there. Yeah, I've forgotten about those. Those, to be honest, I'll have to go and dig them. Especially when he sings San Quentin, that right. live, you got all, you got all the, you know, I hate every inch of you, so. <laughs> and all the prisoners are going, yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, he classic was, stuff. Yeah, and he was like, he was sort of a bridge between uh, sort of gospel country to rock, right? He was someone like in between. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, you know, and going right on till his later life as well, you know, mm. started off as country, but obviously as the spheres, uh, as music developed around him, you know, there's a lot of change, wasn't there, from when he started out right. initially in the beginning, wasn't there? You know, right. if you think he, when he was a teenager, he was, Elvis was a peer, wasn't he, and Jerry Lee Lewis and all those guys recording at Sun, at Sun Studios. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So... And then doing the, the, the U2 type song that he did in Hertz, is it? Oh, I can't remember now. Or did he do that? I, I know. My head's gone with that. I can't remember. My timelines are a bit old, a bit skewed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so J J Jamie, so when did you pick up the guitar? Um, yeah, about when I was 12, I think, or a little bit before that, but we didn't, I didn't have a we had, a, you know, as a lot of people do, battered old acoustic lying around. That was my dad's. Um, so I think I had a go. Um, and then actually, I think I wanted to play. I wanted to play keyboard first. I wanted to play. I wanted a fancy keyboard, but they were too expensive back in those days. So uh, I ended up. Uh, I, I, I was bought a cheap guitar. I thought I'd go for guitar instead. And yeah, and then on and off. Pretty much since then, I've yeah just just carried on, just carried on with it, and just as I say, listened to lots of different artists, mm. try to work things out. I've not been, you know, when when um, when I was learning the guitar, there was there wasn't many books on the stuff, and it wasn't very easily accessible. Um, right. uh, plus, it was quite expensive. I think you know the old initial tuition videos. And things that you used to have um so you know you, you see the stuff on the online now and it's it's crazy it's it's amazing there's so many fantastic guitarists out there mm. and, it, and it's yeah it's it's unbelievable but yeah so i i went through i i'd never really thought i went through a time of not really thinking uh, or not knowing what sort of direction to take in it i've always loved music but just i just didn't know what to what to do with it um I've sung, I've played bass guitar in bands and I've, you know, played guitar in bands where I can. Um, but because I haven't sort of felt where's what direction I was going in, I, I never really, nothing really sort of kind of became long term. I think the long, longest I spent in bands was about three years, but then they didn't do anything. So it was <laughs> playing right. bass, but they didn't do much. So 
it was a bit uh, for me frustrating. Um, but yeah, so as I said, I'd steal little bits and licks and uh, try and work stuff out and uh, try and be like Gary Moore or whoever and and uh, not really, not really go. Some people manage to recreate everything note by note or note for note, and uh, and I wouldn't. I don't have the patience or concentration for that sort of thing. So um, I would just, I would just, uh, just get it roughly, get the vibe, mm. and it it would, it would sort of, yeah, and it, it just sort of comes together in a in a mishmash of whatever comes out these days. Um, but you know, there was bands like Def Leppard as well. They were a big. But for me, a lot of it is not just, it's the, not the lyrics. I've been terrible with lyrics. I quite often do these lyric competitions you see here online, on, on Facebook and people say, you know, they like little quizzes or something. I was hope, hopeless with, with lyrics to, to start with. For yeah. me, it was always the vibe of the song or the chorus, you know, I mean, like I could probably rem remember more choruses. Um, yeah, the vibe of the overall vibe of the song. So that's that's always what I would would connect would connect with. You know, even if it was a good guitarist, if the song wasn't there, it wouldn't. Um, but I remember. Uh, do you remember oh, "Superstitious" by Europe? Right. Yeah, Key Marcello. That was on Out of This World album, I believe, and um, I was in. A shop, a store in, in uh, looking around the records or CDs, whatever it was at the time, and uh, I they used to they had these video monitors up on the ceiling playing music, and this amazing melodic, fantastic tone of guitar came on, and I just was you know uh, <clears throat> captivated by it, and that was Key Marcello's guitar solo in that in that song. I mean, I immediately went and bought the album, but. Is right. that tone is just so, so great to me anyway, to my, but I also like, you know, um, in Iron Maiden, how you have Dave Murray's sound and Adrian Smith, Dave Murray seems to use a lot of the neck pickup and have these, uh, you know, these wonderful bluesy solos. And then you'd get Adrian Smith coming along with his, the, the bridge pickup and, it, you know, the contrasting, Right. So I, I've, I've kind of, you know, that as a as an example, I, I in some of my songs when I do a guitar solo, I mean, a lot of guitarists will do it, but the flip, I'll do a change mid solo for that sort of voice, you know, question and answer type thing. So, right. yeah. So that's a bit of <laughs> what I've been messing about with. Right. <clears throat> so uh, you played in other bands before, like, uh, so when did this idea came into Put put up your like own your own band uh, JPB uh, or James. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it, people people often say it must be a, an ego. <laughs> I've got a huge <laughs> ego. Um, well, well, yeah, I've been in a lot of bands, but I joined other people's bands, and so it was always kind of either the last man in or uh, the the people that you know. It's it's a difficult balance being in a band there's so many different things that you have to juggle for example you know people I spent there was one band I joined as a guitarist and you know if this was from scratch and then we, we needed to choose a band name and they spent hours in the pub uh trying to discuss what what band names and people wouldn't like this uh, you know and it the time wasted doing that sort of thing um and then you know I think I'd spent a few a few years sort of trying meeting different people and just trying to find something I could be involved in uh, a bit later on. Um, and I just I got to a point where some some of them were like what goes on in the band stays in the band kind of thing, and I'm not really that of uh, person to be honest, or whatever, whatever other stuff. So, um, yeah, so I kind of thought, right, I put a lot of effort into the last band I'd been in, and um, it was quite a disappointing 
outcome in the end. And I just thought, I'm going to do my own thing now. And what can I do? I, I tried to, to find, you know, what I thought were cool band names, <laughs> but they'd all been taken. So I had to use my own name, which isn't, uh, it's, it's, it's okay now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of used to it, but it wasn't, it wasn't a look at me kind of thing, because it's not, my appreciation has always been for a band, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't like to go out as a duo, for example, or, um, you know, or even a, a, you've got, you've got to have a band to interact with and do that rapport, that fun on stage, if you like, because it's the performing side of things that is so important where you reach out, I suppose, to, to the audience live. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just like, right, I've, I'm going to make, I'm going to do my project, a, a project, and I'm going to sort of oversee it, if you like, um, um, make sure that the right people are involved with it as well, you know, and so that's, that's, and I, you know, also people that would be able to commit to it as, as much. So yeah, I've gone through a few lineups with it um, over the years because, uh, you know, people join bands for different reasons. Some people join it as a hobby or to, but then if they join it as a hobby and then take four holidays a year, it is not, you know, it doesn't, and it's part time anyway for them. It doesn't really help you go. So I've I've been through a few uh, changes, but the crux of it is me and my my son Danny. Danny has been playing bass for the past few right. years because uh, we've gone down to a, a three piece recently because it's easier to manage. Um, but we're we're looking at um, we're looking at recruiting a new bass player now so danny wants to uh would like to go back onto keyboards which is what he is best at if you like and we want to get hammond and piano back into the live sound right. also he plays he plays guitar as well so a second guitar uh it would be cool as well right so that's where we're up, that's where we're up to at the moment but uh yeah so it's you you on vocals and guitar and then Danny on uh, bass and then who else who plays the drums? Yeah, Pete Peter Kirton he Kirton, he plays the drums. Uh, he's joined us. <laughs> he's not long joined us, but he joined us uh, probably getting on for a couple of years ago now. But because of he, he, I think we've only done about three gigs with him, and uh, because of lockdown and everything, it's like it's it's a. But yeah, he's he's good and it's 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 a great little team we've got at the moment. So um, we're looking forward, to, you know, as, uh, hopefully, or when things get back to normal ish, uh, or live music can resume. We yeah, we have um, we have a lot of things in the in the pipeline. We've you know recently had we're working with a, a management company called Forge Music Group in the UK, a new management company but they they've been helping us with advice and um, promoting releases and stuff um, recently and uh, yeah and uh, there's a fair few other people that are sort of interested in in working with us and putting us on uh, once things are, are lifted so right. it's funny doing it's, it's funny quite funny really you know doing this for, for I don't know uh, seven years seven eight years uh, and i never i never really had the confidence to push to push it if you like um believe it or not <laughs> and um yeah so i just uh, but now i'm i'm kind of feeling it now there's there's more there's a lot more love there coming out so so i've got quite a bit of older material that we can bring through again if you like right although I'm, i am writing new stuff at the moment Right. So I so uh, Jamie, I've been listening to your songs and um, especially uh, the Sonic Smile album. And, oh yeah, yeah, you, you like that one. <laughs> yeah, um, and I know that you start you you release first you release a couple of EPs, right? You you released two EPs in 2014. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I 
I, I spent a year writing and recording them, but that that was like my first, not my first, my first um, journey into songwriting, if you like, where I, I actually finished something. I, I've been messing about with little bits for a long time. Um, and then I left it for a while writing um, on my own, if you like, my own personal writing um, while I was in other other bands and things. And then, yeah, I just, after that last one, I just, when I started my own project, I thought, right, I'm going to, at first it was just a recording project that, and I thought, I'll see how it how it goes. And then, yeah, it just, I thought, nah, it's got, got to go out live. I can't not play live. It's, it has to be done. Um, and yeah, my, my lad Danny's, I think he started off when he was 11 with me playing bass. So he was, he was only this high <laughs> when he started. His bass, the bass was bigger than him, um, nearly, well, it probably was. And uh, yeah, and a few years later, he's now taller than I am. So, uh, so, but we're still, we're still going. So yeah, we did, I did, I recorded 10 songs and then released them as two EPs back in 2014 I think I did one one in January one in July yeah, yeah. Um, but it was it was me sticking I didn't really know a huge amount of what I was doing in regards of releasing promoting or and you know as, as I say I didn't have a band as such so it was it was to me you've got to have the full package to to properly market yourself um, so it's just dipping my toe in the water yeah and then I got the band together and then I wrote the songs for Sonic Smile. Right. They some, well, they were gigged more first, a lot of them, and then uh, I did the demos, yeah, and then released that in 2017. Right. The reason I liked, I think the reason I got uh, interested of Sonic Smile is uh, I think you had sort of a glamish uh, album cover because you have like a jeans uh, type thing that it's like... <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, man. That's you know, that's uh, I did all I do the graphics as well, so I, I did that, but yeah, it was a photo. I photographed a denim jacket I had, and then, um, yeah, a lot of editing on, on that, even though it might not, might not look like it. Um, but yeah, and then the Sonic Smile, I kind of wanted, um, the the actual Sonic Smile logo when I was designing it, I kind of wanted it to look a bit like a one of those enamel badges that you you used to get, you know, right. or you can get, you know, you know, like you had a, you'd have those ACDC logo badges that you can get and put in your jacket. So right. that's where I would, that's yeah. So it was definitely a retro feel on that um, on that album cover. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I kind of like it. We're we're. I had it remixed and we're kind of thinking about maybe re re releasing it and uh, at some point as a under a different format. Right. Uh, from that album, one of the songs I really like is Can't Stop Loving You because uh, oh. it really brings me back to I sort of get an idea that this might be a song of like the Who or like there's a bit of like Led Zeppelin there or you know. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't know. People often say, you know, or oh, who do you sound like? And I, I just don't know, who, right? Because I like so many, so many different styles, as you like, and I, I don't feel like I want to be restricted by. Uh, but yeah, I get. I mean, that that um, can't stop loving you is. We quite often start with that at a, at a gig, you know. But it's just, it's a, it's a lovely just repeating riff. That just that just keeps keeps going and live. It, it gives whenever I write a song, I think, what can I do with this live to maybe extend it or give crowd participation. So mm -hmm. everything you know, always always like, and that's a great one, um, a great one for that. But yeah, just a, a simple repetitive riff. So there's my status quo influences there. Right. Uh, you know, that to me, I mean, you, you, you obviously, it's funny hearing different people saying to you, you know, what they hear in the music due to their influences, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but, but yeah, I can hear what you, I can hear what you're saying there. Um, yeah, and there's a bit in the middle where I've got 
like a, a breakdown where it goes, um, ooh, you know that bit? Uh, and, and there's a hey bit in it. And I remember when I was going in the studio, to the, I recorded all these hey's and I, I took them to the studio and said, can you, all these hey's at this point, I, I want them to sound like Def Leppard, please. Right. So he put this, he put this, these big reverbs on them, and it, yeah. And I said, "That's it, that's it." Hey, you know, <laughs> kind of like um, I don't know. Well, said, "Pour some sugar on me, hey." Is that it? You know. And right. uh, yeah, so th there's little little hardbacks to to various influences, you know. Uh, I, the ooh bit. Uh, I always remember seeing crowds at status quo concerts. Doing the quote, you know, live. So that's kind of a bit of a, a heads up to, right? You know, a, a nod, if you like, to the, to the, to that place as well. <laughs> yeah, this is. Yeah. I must be quite like. There's some of the songs are quite different, aren't they? Any any others on there? You you dig? I, I mean, I like sound sound of the summer. That's. Uh, um, favorite of mine right. um but you know three chords three chords and a prayer i always say i think it's three chords and the truth supposed to be isn't it but it's for me it's three chords and a prayer so. <laughs> right um you also released a live uh, unplugged album right 2019 where was that recorded oh yeah um i released it digi digitally in 2019 but the actual cd um version has only just come i've only just released that uh, a few weeks ago um but that was recorded i i wasn't very well in i was i was for i don't know for quite a few years actually in fact probably longer but not realizing i've been struggling with um some mental health issues stress and um, anxiety and <clears throat> I've been slowly getting worse and I found myself not able to concentrate properly and it always took a long time to to um, to write and and think as well if you'd have done this interview with me like a year ago I, I wouldn't have been I'd have been struggling to find a train of thought and been incredibly incredibly slow and I think I I was trying to I became just physically and mentally exhausted at the beginning of 2019. I think um, a few things were going on in my life at the time. I was trying to get fit, and I was gone at it too too much, if you know what I mean. And wore myself out physically, and and then um, I had a bit of a collapse really, and ended up for um, probably ten months virtually not able to do anything, just a zombie, just just sat, I couldn't do anything except eat and sleep. Mm. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah I, something I never thought I'd recover from, to be honest, it was a really horrible experience. But luckily I've got a very supportive wife and uh, she's helped me through. Um, but I did, I did one gig, um, with that in 2019, you know, full band gig, uh, I think, or two, one at the beginning, just before I got really ill or in the middle. And it was a real struggle because I couldn't remember the words <laughs> and stuff. You know, I couldn't remember where I was in the songs. I mean, just to people watching it, uh, they, they probably wouldn't notice so much, but I, could, I remember myself how, how difficult it, it was, you know. Um, yeah, so in in that then I book I booked some studio time because I wanted to you know carry on writing. You know, I was, I was hoping I'd be better. And then we have a, a local studio um, down down the road, about well, five minutes away in the next village. Mm. And the guy there who works with a, a lot of a lot of a lot of people. I, I've I've recorded everything with so far virtually with his sort of input in either mixing it or you know um but we just because i hadn't been 
able to write anything, I just thought, why don't we go and just record some acoustic versions? Because we like to, me and Danny like to rehearse, if you like, sometimes just with piano and acoustic guitar. And also, I'm quite open to interpreting songs in different medium, you know, like that, using, you know, having having the the palette, if you like, to to present the songs in a different way. Right. And yeah, it was it was it was cool. We, we went in, set of sort of mics, and we just recorded. And um, yeah, I was still really struggling, uh, to be honest. But it it was kind of a bit of a healing because it, it it made me feel like I could actually uh, there was light at the end of the tunnel, if you like. So uh, we did the ten songs, and that's what's on the, the acoustic. Album which you can uh, of course get online, listen online from various digital distributors, or you can order it from the website, folks. We'll mention that in a minute. Right. But yeah, it's it was uh, it was yeah it was a tough a tough time, uh, I, and I had intended to because it's called um, Live and Unplugged Volume One, and I had intended to do a second one, and I had another day books later on in the year a few months down the line and we went in again and i was just so and i we started playing and i couldn't i couldn't do it i couldn't i didn't have them the energy to so i had to say to my man sorry man it's uh yeah so it was a bit disappointing really i never liked doing that sort of thing but right. you know it was a place i was at but obviously i'm 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 much better now and you know it's uh it's thing yeah things are things are, get, are good you know positive energy you know one one day at a time right so, yeah so it's it's cool yeah it's good and that's that's really so you know when you listen to that acoustic album it's there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of hurting going on in the background of it you know you might not hear it but uh you know, it was, I was not at my best, but it, it still captured, it was a, it was a good fun and a good raw, it was just, as I say, just raw, it. Mm. And, and that's what we, that's what we wanted. So quite, I'm quite pleased with it, and would do it, definitely do it again. Right. <clears throat> so Jamie, I, I noticed that from your website that you're, uh, you're using uh, Blackstar amplification, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like my black stars. Yeah, the, my babies are sat over here. Oh, you can see them there, can't you? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they're noisy, aren't they? Um, yeah, I've 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 used a few amps over the years, um, but um, I kind of came back wanting to when I was re reinventing the the band, if you like, uh, I kind of wanted to come back a bit loud and proud and not be hiding stuff away and making everything small. And do you know what I mean? Everything, everything's gone really small these days with mm. lunchbox. I mean, they're great amps. They're all great amps. I used to have a Hughes and Kettner one. Uh, are fantastic sounds, clean to die for. Um, but yeah, and I just thought, oh, I'll try, try Black Star out. And I, yeah, I've got uh, a couple here and. Uh, I've been using them for about three years now, I think, and uh, they're great. Yeah, and they were kind of on the artist um, roster, so we're allowed to say, you know, powered by Blackstone. On our, <laughs> you know, yeah, on our uh, marketing, yeah, it's it's cool. It's it's a British brand, obviously probably not made in Britain, but <laughs> you right. know, it's it's it's. I mean, I I, I do like uh, other brands as well but you know you've got to kind of uh find something that's that you're happy with it's pretty it's pretty versatile um i'm still exploring it i i need to do more work on on exploring uh i tend to be you know plug and play quite often that's that's what I, right. so uh but right. yeah it's, it's 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 a great amp and uh, I was going to do some videos of it, which I, I did try one the other week. And, uh, I wasn't happy enough with the quality of it because I'm not really a presenter as such. So um, uh, I need a bit of practice on it anyway. Uh, yeah, so I, I, so uh, this video stuff is pretty new to me, you know. Uh, 
it's it's taken a long, long while to get used to. And yeah, um, I I use them for record, recording all the time. I'm even just DIing them just to, to record into into my door here mm. uh, for song ideas. So yeah, I, I'm really I really like them. And right. uh, they should send me some more. <clears throat> So, um, although the you know the pandemic has happened 2020, but you actually released uh, two songs in 2020, right? Two new songs. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, oh, that's it's quite funny. When I started the year, um, we'd I think we just I, I was it was quite optimistic and positive for a lot of live shows coming along, and then. Um, Obviously, the the pandemic was starting and had started in China, and we I kind of expected it, really, to be honest. Um, and I wrote this song at the end of 2019, sorry, around a year ago, a year ago at the moment. Um, I think it was just before Christmas there. Um, but yeah, I wrote this song called Ready for Action, um, which... I, because I'd not been well, and it it was the first song I'd written since then, you know, it, it, it was uh, a statement, if you like, of intent, you know, I'm ready for action. Right. But also, right. also there are, there are connotations with the lyrics uh, as uh, the, it's a, it's a nod back to um, the seventies. 70s 80s if you like when we didn't have so much technology so and and music and rock bands were the superstars if you like and 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 people would go out dancing or to a club or bar to to meet people meet the girls and you know, you know what i mean it, it, it was an odd back to those those days lyrically really um so it's 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 a rock and roll it's a rock and roll true rock and roll song Right. But, um, but the title River Action obviously you can people relate to it in different in different ways. Yeah. Um, and I I initially released it myself in February of last year. Um but I think it I can't I think I released it and then a week later uh, we had lockdown. So we had this river bang lockdown the world's lockdown so um yeah so we it, there's yeah you know, the irony of that is not wasted on me i find it quite uh, amusing in a, a, a warped sort of way um so yeah and then i i uh, joined uh joined up with this management company forge music group and um i had another i had another track that I was, I was writing, which I was actually going to, I was, I was asking if I should put it out as a, as a freebie, you know, uh, and he said, no, that's, I love that, put it out as the next, as the next single, so uh, uh, that was Where We Belong, and Where We Belong, I wrote, it's kind of a bluesy rock vibe with a, with a big country type chorus that's well that's my interpretation of it anyway yeah. um but where we belong had was about especially in this time when live music stops there's no you know to me there's that feeling of comedy music live music especially it brings people together you know you might be struggling or be lonely or you know and when you come together in this crowd of people and get lost in the music that's what that and in particular the the rock community i think because um you know it's not the main you know the, the mainstream is different isn't it but yeah the rock community especially um so that's that's what i was relating to when I wrote that so uh, you know it's our sense of belonging as a right. you know, no matter what what our what problems we have um, in our day-to-day -day lives or differences so yeah so that's that's what that song was and then um, yeah it was it was pretty good and then he the 
John from Forge said, let's watch we re release your ready for action again. So we had it remixed and mastered and, and stuck it out again. And uh, we, you know, promoted it a lot more this time. Uh, and and there was another lockdown after it, so I'm starting to think that's jinxed that song. But it's had really good reception from people mm. all over. A little bit heavier than perhaps what I've done before, but I, you know, to me, again, it's the palette canvas. Um, there's, I like my heavy stuff, so something's going to be heavy, something's going to be, you know, it's it is right. what it is. Um, yeah, there was another song that I put out in 2019 as well called um, Little Love in Sometime. Have you come across that one? Yes, I, I actually, you had two versions of it. So I really love that one. That's a bit of a heavy one also, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. It's a good, I love, yeah, it was, not, there's, it's got some, it's got a, I don't know, I, I, I wanted to write a, a long song. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't the only reason I wrote the song, but it, it was kind of the influence. You know, I'm going to write a long song. What shall I write? But you, you, um, I don't know. Songs like, um, I don't know if you know the song 4,500 times by Status Quo. You know, they, I think that was a nine or 10. I, I can't remember now. But a long, it was a long song with lots of little, I don't know, twists and turns, little roads in right. it. But then it came back, it would come back to, to, uh, the hooks if you like so that's what so that's what i was trying to do with with this one or that's how it that's how it came came about so you've got kind of a a, a bit of a riff uh a couple of riffs isn't there and then a, a few um a few hooks as in the chorus of some time and need a little loving yeah so I, I i really like that song it's good fun to play to play live uh oh. it can mess up when you, it can mess up people when they're just they haven't played it before that they get a bit confused right but yeah that's that's a cool yeah i put out a shorter version just uh, a, a remix version just to uh allow it maybe people didn't want to play a full uh you know seven and a half minute song <laughs> so, yeah i was i was selling out right. gotta be done sometime <laughs> yeah so so that's where that's that's where we're up to really i think i've got quite a few songs on the boil mm. um, there's uh, a new ep coming out next year um and it's going to be um so the the singles that we've done this year uh, along with some of the tracks that actually haven't been on cd before and it might be a cd only right. so we we haven't finished sort of deciding on it on the final final outcome yet, but uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where where we're up to, and then the, uh, it's it's EP stroke album, but I'm I'm still you know seeing how we go with with uh, the new stuff, it could be two EPs yet, so um, I don't want to uh, what's the word I don't want to rush stuff. Got right. Flow. right. <clears throat> so, Jamie, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, so, uh, I mean, now uh, everything is like everything is digital and a lot of these streaming services. And but it's it's uh, in a way it's it's good for the artist because you can put out your music quite faster than before. But I know that it it doesn't really uh, it's not really good for the artist because it doesn't make a lot of good revenue, right? So, what your thought on these streaming services and all that? Yeah, um, I have different different sort of thoughts on mm. on it, and uh, yeah, it, it it doesn't make you much money. The, the The problem is with it is that anybody can now upload music to a streaming service, right. so you don't have to be good at what you do. You can just upload. You can just record. There's like, you know, quality control, if you like. And some people, I don't think, to spend enough time making, you know, producing or getting the music produced 
to a, a good enough standard. Um, so that's one thing. So that means that people get lost in the noise, if you like. Right. Um, a lot, a lot more, I guess. However, as you say, it's it's a very quick and easy means to get your music out there to people. Um, I mean, I've had this debate with so many people. The yes, the revenue is rubbish, but somebody might hear you on this medium and then buy a CD from your website. Mm. You know, mm. so it's I I think it's a necessary evil. Uh, what I don't like is the fact that the people behind it are billionaires and making so much money out of the creative, the work of the creators, if you like. And it's really, it's a disgraceful amount to to pay an artist. Right. To pay some of their, their music, you know, less than, less than one cent, less than, you know, not point not one you know how and you know for i guess if you were if you're somebody like taylor swift or or you know somebody really mainstream med sheer and those sort of multi-million uh then it's just another revenue and they probably make enough money from it and then you but to be honest you wouldn't know whether they had sort of like extra deal you know deal, special deals where they get more paid more would you you know because they have more influence so yeah so it's, it's, it's a bit of a love hate thing but mm. I, I do try and put things most of it up there but I do think we have to balance a little bit and maybe you know in a release maybe put a, a certain track or tracks up there and then have a you know a different have a cd version with bonus tracks or something or something you can't get through streaming just right. to but the digital age is strange anyway i mean i'm not really no not many people know of me and my music in the grand scheme of things um at the moment <laughs> no and uh, uh it's when I released Sonic Smile um, in 2017, as soon as it had been released digitally, I, I, I discovered it was on free MP3 download sites as well. You know, pirated sites. Right. I just thought, you know, come on. It's, it's, so I guess by these streaming sites will mean that pirated sites will have less, you know, attention. But it's, it, 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 when I first saw it, I was just so disappointed. Um, but then I, 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 but then you sort of think, well, at the end of the day, if people want to support you and your music and like it, they'll come to you direct anyway. And I'm, this year has been very good, for, very good for that um, mm -hmm. because I've spent more time promoting myself and I've been more in a better place to do that as well. So yeah, we're yeah. So it's right. it's kind of cool. so that's that's where I'm I am with it. I mean, I, you know, I know and I understand. You know, music is a business, and businessmen have always made. You know, the record companies have always made it traditionally, haven't they? You know, but um, but yeah, I do think the the artists need to have a better return because you cannot live on 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 what they're right you know. <clears throat> so um yeah. you 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 mentioned about uh, your website uh, do you also have bandcamp or you only have your own website no we've got bandcamp yeah um i've got most of the sort of music websites we're on um facebook um instagram although i, I need to do better on instagram um youtube uh yeah as you say band cam and then music's available on on loads you know the apple itunes um spotify uh, but yes uh, band camp for sure and and also on on the actual website and i i do have a a new merch 
store sort of coming into fruition in the new year as well, which uh, is a, a new thing I've been working on with, with somebody. Um, so, but that'll all be accessible from the websites. I probably need to make my band camp more accessible, I think, from the website. But yeah, the, all the links are there to the different uh, uh, right. cause of call. I always try and put, point people to the website because it's it, it's it's like the home, the home, if you like. And I, I tend to stick everything on Facebook, but Facebook is becoming almost useless for musicians now with all the restrictions that Facebook are putting. Right. I'll put it in, you know, the reach is, is not it's not there. Yeah. So I think a lot of musicians are trying to get people to sign up to mailing lists on, on the websites. Uh, and I know I'm going to, you know, look into doing that as well. Because, uh, yeah, it's you can't when you don't earn enough from your streaming and then places people like Facebook want you to pay. To, to to reach your fans, if you like, and, and right. support them, it, it doesn't make sense, does it? You know. <clears throat> yeah. So. So it's uh, yeah, it's a bit. There's a lot. Of, you, you're fighting battles on different fronts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I even um, because I I upload this to YouTube and I, I used to do it in Facebook, but uh, Facebook was such a hassle because it takes so long to upload compared to YouTube and it's uh, mm -hmm. the reach as you said is not good so I just stop uh, doing it on Facebook anymore because and just focus the video on <laughs> YouTube only yeah. yeah that's a good idea I'm, I'm, I must admit I've been uh, not 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 uh, as much as I should have but I've definitely I've worked the YouTube a little bit more than I have um, in the past right. this year and I think yeah like you I think I'm going to, a lot of bands are doing that as well I think trying to build up the YouTube rather than rather than uh, Facebook because it's just a losing right it's, so it's just, you know. right so Jamie so this uh, lockdown and pandemic and uh, these things what uh, during this time uh, did you discover anything uh, about yourself or did you learn uh, some sort of a lesson from it um I've, I've kind of, I don't, for me, it's not been that bad because I, I, uh, I wasn't well. I had a really bad year the previous year, and I've not been well for some time. Right. So it's actually it's given me time to regroup, if you like, and and just get things. I've made a whole load of friends on Facebook and fans recently uh and i spent a bit of time chatting to people and yeah and yeah i used to not want to bother i'll be afraid of hassling people you know and uh I, I, through doing this i've kind of reached a, a point where right if somebody's not interested in talking to me then that's fair enough i don't care uh it doesn't bother me and, and um but yes, I now I've reached out and to a lot of people, and it's it's been really good. So from that aspect, um, I'm and I'm feeling a lot more positive about what I do, as well. So yeah, it's been for me, it's not been too too bad. Yes, I've missed not being able to go out, and yes, the restrictions are tough. Um, and even someone like me who hides away in a in a little dark room here, recording all the, the time, of, you know, uh, you know, it, it's, it has, yeah, the restrictions are, are tough. Um, but yeah, it's overall, and I know it's, it's tough, but it's been a positive year for me, and I, I'm looking forward to things returning back to a, a sort of normal. Mm. Um, but it's also, unfortunately, shown me or shown that there's a lot of that there's a lot of selfish people out there and you know there's there's a lot of people who have, don't really care about anybody else and uh sadly from you know what's been going on 
in the world and it's yeah well, i suppose it's always been like that but it just seems to be a bit heightened at the mm. moment so uh but we keep going don't we one foot at a time and just uh just you, you're always you know you're always trying to get through one way or another aren't you but yeah i'm 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 buzzing for new releases i'm buzzing to get out there and play live and get in front of an audience lots of people wanting to come and see us mm. um, so you know building the build the fan base further and just keep keeping doing it you know i've been stubborn i've been doing this on and off for a long time i've got a very supportive wife as i said before right. uh, and I, I i'm not ready to give up yet right can't keep a good man down <laughs> yes right <laughs> Uh, so Jamie, what's your message to uh, people who listen to your music, support supporting you? Um, thank you so much, the people who are supporting me. Yeah, uh, it's it's so important to connect with people and for people to connect with us, and that's something as as artists as well. So you know, feel free to drop us a message if you like a song or anything. You know, if, if something's touched you, reached out to you um something in the music you know just get in touch we're available you know the, I, i generally reply relatively quickly unless we're in a totally different time zone and uh, or i'm asleep yeah that happens as well sometimes but you know yeah get in touch and i, I everybody who buys and comments supports we really appreciate you know and if you can help out the band by you know it doesn't cost to subscribe to the channels or to like um it's funny i used to be so bothered by that and uh nah, it doesn't matter anymore you know you can't please everybody but but you know the people that do support you it's 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 amazing it's it's it's, it's, it's amazing that people uh love what you do when you're creative mm. like that like you liking my sonic smile right <laughs> Powered by Blackstar. Right. Jamie, what's your, uh, anybody you want to shout out to? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to John at Forge Management. Who else can I shout out to? Oh, Don McKellar. Yes. Plug, promote and play PR. Who else can I shout out to? Um, oh, my wife, Melanie. <laughs> um, the boys, Danny, Thomas, all the DJs who have played my music. Thank you. you so much this 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 year um i've had so much great support and i i could reel off names for hours and hours you channel channel as well first for uh, having me on to to chat as well you know yeah. it's every, every little thing it's lovely to connect with people and just chat about about music or you know what's going on and it, it's great that it brings people together Right. And I thank you, sir, as well. Really appreciate it. And I can't think there's probably loads of people I should be thanking, but you know, right. Thank you to everyone. <clears throat> so, Jamie, thank thanks for doing this. I really enjoy talking to you. So, uh, looking forward to your, you know, your new music, and then hopefully you can uh, start performing live maybe next year or so. And uh, stay safe. Wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Yeah, it's been great, great talk, talking to you as well. I hope I let you get enough words in. <laughs> Thank, you, care, Thank you, Jamie. Thank you.